with you. By the way, happy Valentine's Day. So glad you guys are here tonight. <clears throat> I wrote a song to my wife, and I shot a music video for it. And so tonight, I want to debut it for you guys. You guys want to see it? All right. Tim, can we get it all black in here and run that on that screen for me? Thank you very much. Check us out. It's called Lockdown. Here it goes. Yo, uh, 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 just a kid with the world on my feet. Breath in my lungs, not a thing that I need. Tied down with my girl on my seat, and I'm dumb and in love, and I'm young and I'm free. I like the way you rockin' to the beat. I like the way you rockin' them snakes. I like the way you talkin' to me, just when you walkin' with me, just when we walk in the street. You laughing at the jokes to the speak, and then we laugh to the tears on the cheek. Two kids with the world on a leash, and I know, and I know you're a blessing to me, and that's why. One time for the guys that married up, 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 up. Two times for the women that hold it down, 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 down. Three times for that always be around, round, round, round. You got my heartbeat on lockdown, oh. I want you close to me, you never get told to me. You got my heartbeat on lockdown. All right, so check us out. Tonight, guess what? You guys are going to help me have another great Valentine's Day present for my wife. Now, here's how we're going to do it. For those that don't know, I do Christian hip-hop music, but I also do graffiti art. And so for every year, I have tried to outdo myself from the year prior. And so the first year, when I decided that I was going to do something special for my wife, I decided that I was going to take one of my favorite pictures of her, and I turned it into a really, really simple painting of her, but it kind of summed up her essence. This was pretty good. She was pretty surprised. But I want to go ahead and turn your attention to the screen right now. Check this out. This picture right here that I want to throw up is what I did about two years ago. I decided to paint her on a wall. She means the world to me. And it meant so much to me that I wanted to go ahead and wish her a happy Valentine's Day because I was all the way across, ta- all the, way across the country in, in San Francisco. Now, this picture right here on the bottom That was a shot I took of her when she wasn't paying attention. Now, she hates when I do that because I never give her a chance to look right. But that's the thing I love about taking pictures of my wife is when she's not ready. I like to snap a picture because I see her essence in that photo. And so I took that one picture, as you can see right there, and I started to paint it into another painting. So that's where this was one I did. This is about two years ago. Yeah. So I painted this of her because this is a picture that I keep. Now, at the bottom, I had my kids write, I love you. So that's what happened there. But I painted this because I love the way it looks. But the problem was, is how do I keep outdoing myself every year at Valentine's when I felt like I really nailed it the year prior? And so tonight, you guys are going to help me. Here's what I'm going to do. She has no idea I've done this. So tonight, I painted another painting. But I want to do something different because after Haven tonight, I'm going to take her out to Carabas. We're just going to have a very simple, simple dinner. Uh, This year, we're actually uh, celebrating almost 20 years of marriage. So this is a very, very significant thing. So... So tonight, here's what we're going to do. When I take her out tonight, I'm going to tell her that not only did I paint her something, is that all the kids in Haven helped me celebrate Happy Valentine's with her. So here's how we're going to do it. I got my phone. I'm going to video you guys right here. Everyone over here to my side is going to say happy. We're going to stop. Everybody in the middle is going to go Valentine's. And over here, you're going to say day. All right? So when I splice it all together, I'm going to show her Happy Valentine's Day. Okay? You guys ready to practice? Let's start right here. Three, two, one. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Good practice. Go. Pretty good. Pretty good. Good. And all right. Good practice. We'll come back to that in a second. You go ahead and kill those lights for me, Tim. Now, here's the thing is this year I decided that I was going to try and outdo what I did last year. And so we're going to go ahead and throw up a picture here a couple weeks ago. (laughs) I totally snagged her with this photo when she wasn't paying attention. I looked at her and I said, babe, turn, real quick, give, me, give me a little quick little kiss. And then I snagged this picture. Now, I love this picture because it's just so simple and it's so innocent. And when I played that song for you guys, that's kind of how I felt when I wrote it to her. So I took that and I made her this this year. So here's what we're going to do. I need my good friend, Pastor Jeff. Would you come on up here, Mr. Jeff? Give it up for Jeff, everybody. Jeff's in the house. A couple things you may or may not know about Jeff. Jeff, you can go ahead and get your stuff ready. For those that don't know, uh, Jeff actually has a secret hidden talent. 
uh, for years, Jeff has been earning side money as a speed painter. And so he goes to different people's houses, they give him a picture, and they just basically say, hey, Jeff, you've got one minute to paint this picture. And so Jeff's been walking around the office the whole time. He's been bragging to me, talking about how great a painter he is. He's like, he looked at my painting. He's like, your painting is terrible. My painting is all good. I'm going to do a better painting than you did. And I said, Jeff, I appreciate that because here's what I need you to do, buddy. I need you to give me another copy of this because I want to give one to her tonight and I want to leave one that she can hang up. So Jeff, you got a good look at it? You got a good look at the painting? Here it is. Look, man, you don't even, you're not even going to... He's like, I don't even need it. Okay. All right. You, you got it going on like that. All right, Jeff. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to leave your paint. Here's your canvas right there. I'm going to go ahead and give you a minute. And while Jeff works on that painting, I thought I would share with you guys tonight about the first time I ever asked out a girl in eighth grade and how it went. All right. I've shared this story before. It went like this. First of all, I want to compliment you girls on how your hair looks in the year 2000. What is going on? Seriously? Uh, he's getting warmed up, guys. Don't, don't, he's just messing with you. He's been bragging about his painting skills. All right, so when I was in eighth grade, I really liked this girl. She had these huge bangs going off. It was the 80s. Her hair was like this high off her forehead. And I decided I was going to ask her out. I decided, I said, I'm going to ask you out by asking you out with a classic version of eighth grade love. I went, do you like me? Check yes. Big box. You know what I'm talking about. Or no. Jeff, what is going on? Seriously. That's terrible, dude. That looks like she's killing me in that picture right now. She's stabbing me to death. Why do I have, I'm embarrassed. What, what, why do I have a tumor on my head? I'm going to give him another minute, guys. Okay, I apologize. He sometimes oversells himself. He's going to pull it all together in just a second here, okay? Anyway, so I asked the girl out. I was like, I like you. Do you like me? Check yes box. Check no box. And the thing that was amazing about her is that she could take one piece of paper, she could turn it into a pterodactyl just by origami styles. And I thought that's what all girls did when they went to the bathroom at the same time, that they learned origami. It's not true. Anyway, so I'm sorry. I'm just super distracted here, guys. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I, I apologize. This is not how the night was supposed to go. Dude, what is this? <laughs> can, you, can, you, can you please get off my stage? I'm embarrassed. I, I paid you $5. Here's the deal. <laughs> uh, two years ago, I took her name and I put it together like this. And I wrote her name out because to, what she means to me is everything. But see, as an artist, there's one thing I understand. A canvas plus paint does not equal a masterpiece. You cannot make a beautiful picture if you just decide to go at it. Now, what am I talking about? Go ahead and play that video while I'm talking. See, what started to happen was the difference between what Jeff did and what I did. I began to make myself an outline. And as I began to paint the picture, as I began to make this sculpture, as I began to draw who she was, I can't make a masterpiece beautiful if I don't have a guideline to what I'm trying to paint. Now, why am I saying this? Because some of us, this is how we approach relationships. We just go at it with no idea, no guideline, no purpose. But if you look at my picture right there, you can start to begin to see what I wanted to communicate come together, little by little. But I would not have been able to give this to her if I did not make an outline, a guideline. If I did not have parameters of what I wanted to paint, I cannot make a masterpiece. Now, that's funny. Obviously, we knew he couldn't paint. But there's no way he was going to be able to reproduce this by simply going at it and trying it his best. Guys, I want to tell you, girls, I want to tell you that this is the way a lot of us just approach relationships. We don't follow any sort of parameters or guidelines. We just go at it, and then we wonder why our life and our relationships are a mess. Now, let me show you a very simple Bible verse. Go ahead and run that right there. It says this in 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Don't be yoked together with unbelievers. For what does righteousness and wickedness have in common? What can fellowship, can light have with darkness? Now, If we are talking about guidelines, if we're talking about parameters, well, let's figure out what God has to say. 
Let's figure out for one second what God has to say about dating, about relationships, even about friendships, about connecting with somebody else. And I want to give you a very simple illustration to explain that. Here's what I want to show you. What, bringing up here in just one second, what Jeff's going to show you is a simple bicycle. This is my seven-year-old's bicycle. Now, this first bicycle I'm going to show you, you may or not be able to tell whether it's got it all together or whether it doesn't. But when Paul wrote that verse, what Paul was saying was saying he was talking about two different animals that would plow. And what the two different animals would do is they would lash them together, and that's how they would plow out the field. So if you had a fast animal and a slow animal, if you had an animal that had an injury with an animal that did not have an injury, and they decided to try and plow out that field, guess what would happen? The fast one would be slowed down by the broken one. Now, just looking at this bicycle real quick, it looks like it's fine. It looks like there's nothing wrong with it. But if you look a little bit closer, what you will begin to understand is that this bike ain't going nowhere because this bike is broken. The wheel is broken. But I'll take you one step further and tell you, guess what? This world is broken. You're broken. I'm broken. Some of us are in broken relationships, and we're trying to go and pass it off like everything is okay. But I'm here to tell you, that bicycle ain't going nowhere, but this one is going everywhere. Why? Why? All it came down to was one simple thing that worked right. And so tonight, what I want to give you an illustration is, if you, as a Christian or someone that's trying to follow after God, is putting together a relationship with someone that isn't, once you start to put these two things together, and you try to walk it out, you're not going nowhere. Why? Because the broken one will always slow down the one that isn't. Tonight... Some of you guys are in broken relationships. Some of y'all are in relationships right now that, very simply put, they're toxic. But I'll take you one step further. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story. Because when I was a teenage boy, man, I got friend zone all over the place. All the time. I was the type of guy, I'd be friend with the girl. I would see her, and she would always like the bad boy. And I cannot figure out why. Because I'm like, I'm going to treat you nice. I'll be nice to you. And all I would hear over and over when she would come back to class, oh, man, he broke my heart again. I can't believe it. Oh, man, he's so mean. Man, why can't he be more like you? I'm like, I'm right here. I got friend zoned constantly because no one had ever told me that I was broken to begin with. See, fellas? Sometimes we get friend zone or sometimes we get kind of pushed to the side and we can't understand why the girl, <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> You're broken, buddy. You're broken, man. You got to pull this out. <laughs> it's okay. You're doing fine. Give Jeff a hand. He's trying his hardest. Come on now. <laughs> the point was, is I realized a long time later was that girls don't want a friend, they want a man. There's a big difference. Some of you guys are getting friend zone because you think just being nice to her is what she wants, and you can't figure out why she keeps running after the guy that treats her badly. Because I'll put it this way. If you're in a dark alley, and you're with that guy, and someone comes along that's going to harm you, you don't want a nice guy right next to you. You want a man. Now, fellas... This is part of the problem is because most of us have been raised without a dad to pour into us and teach us what it means to be a man. And so because of that, we're broken. Ladies, I'll take it one step further. Some of you keep running after these guys that are no good to you, that are terrible to you, that leave your heart broken. Why? Because most of you never had a father to tell you that you are special, that you are wonderful, that you are beautiful. And so you try to find that in a relationship. You try to find that, and what basically starts to happen? Let's try and put the broken with the good one together, and let's see how thing that rolls. Terrible. It can barely get going. It can barely even make it. Let me tell you something, guys. Some of you, this is your relationships right now. Can you put that verse up for me one more time, Tim? This is what God has to say. Don't be stuck together with unbelievers. For what does righteousness and wickedness have in common? What can fellowship, uh, can light have with darkness? Tonight, you've messed up. I've messed up. We've all done things that God says don't do. The Bible says that we are all broken. 
were broken by a thing called sin. Some of you are in abusive relationships. Some of you are in toxic relationships that aren't good for you. Some of you are dating people that are pulling you down. They are slowing you down. Yet You're still trying to serve God as best as you can, and you can't figure out why you can't move forward. I'm here to tell you, you've been unequally yoked. Now, tonight, I'll take it one step further past that. Some of you, when Valentine's rolls around, you're just straight depressed. Because no one, it feels like, likes you at all. And so you're broken because you feel like you're too tall, you're too short, you're too fat, you're too skinny, you're too this, you're too that. You're never going to be enough that anyone would actually like you enough to want to ask you out. And because of that, you look in the mirror and you say, I'm not worth anything. My challenge you tonight is this. To understand the Bible says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God does not make junk. God does not make mistakes. The way he made you is wonderful, awesome. You are a beautiful creation of who he is. And here's the deal. Your self-worth is not based on whether you have a valentine tonight. Who you are as a person is not based on whether you got someone that thinks you are before all else. Your self-worth tonight, if no one has told you, I'll tell you right now. You are the most worthy, wonderful creation God made. you know why? Because he made you. He doesn't make a mistake. When he sees you, he sees his perfect creation. I know that may not be what they tell you. That may not be how you feel right now. You may feel like you're broken. Guess what? That's okay. I felt the same way. When I was 15, I was struggling. I was trying to make it through. I had acne on my face. I was awkward. I was five foot two with a size 12 foot. I looked like an L walking down the hallway. It's true. And I said, how would any girl ever like that? I had rap dreams. I had all kinds of things. And I'll tell you what, until I met who Jesus was, I did not realize that I was worth something amazing. What God wants us to do tonight is break free from those things that are slowing us down. And so as the worship team begins to make their way up here, this is how we're going to end it. On Valentine's Day tonight, I want to challenge you to examine your own life and ask yourself, am I broken? And if you are, then my next challenge to you is, is to be willing to admit that you're broken. Some of you here tonight, as I'm speaking to you, you're already starting to zone out. Do you know why? Because it even hurts for you to even hear this. But I'll tell you what, that phone that you're looking into for validation will never tell you what God wants to tell you. That Snapchat, that Instagram, that like, that boyfriend, that girlfriend, all those things will never validate you the way that God says he wants to validate you. Because if you're broken, then I want to offer to you someone that can fix you. And it starts with the one simple thing. It's just surrendering. It's being willing to say, God, I'm tired of doing it on my own. I realize that I am broken. I realize that I can't make it on my own, and I'm ready to give it up. If I walked in here, God forbid, like that kid that walked into that that school, and when he put that gun up, I guarantee you a lot of people put up their hands and surrender. Why? Because they waved the white flag and said, we can't beat this. God is saying to you tonight, will you surrender to me? He's not holding a gun to you. He's offering you life. He's not holding a gun to you. He's telling you, stop trying to do it on your own. He's not holding a gun to you. What he's telling you, your dad might have abandoned you, but he says he's a father that will never abandon you. Fellas, he's saying to you that I can teach you how to be a man because he's the lion. He's the king of kings. He is the one that wants to teach you what it means to be a man. A man that other people want to follow after. I've been married for 20 years, not because I'm so great, but because God is so great. Now, I want to bring you to a place where you can be in relationships that are a beautiful masterpiece. But if you try to paint that picture without any guidelines, you're going to make a big mess. But tonight, my challenge to you is... If you feel that you are broken, if you're going through something right now tonight, if you need some help, some prayer, right over here are a bunch of awesome people that love you and care about you and want to walk with you through whatever you feel you're broken in. Tonight, some of us need to give up some relationships that are slowing us down. And so in just a second, I'm going to pray. Desi's going to begin to lead us in worship. 
You can stay in worship for one second. You're totally welcome to do that. But if it's something God is stirring in your heart that you feel broken and you need some prayer, I, challenge, I dare you to get up and walk over there. I, you know what? And if you feel a little nervous, grab your friend's hand. And say, will you come with me? Tonight can be your night where God makes a breakthrough. You don't have to make a mess. You can make a masterpiece if you're willing to follow his guidelines. That's all he wants you to do. And you'll see a beautiful picture made. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We appreciate you. You take messes and you make masterpieces, God. Some of us are broken, Lord. I pray that tonight you begin to put that brokenness back together. Challenge kids right now. Help them to step out of their, out of their comfort zone. Help them to meet you in your name. Amen.